Good morning and praise the Lord. My name is Reverend Lillian Karinga and I'm born again. Christ is King and Lord of my life. I am grateful to God for this opportunity to reflect with you from the Word of God. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, we honor your holy name and we thank you because of the fact that your word is active and alive. And as your word has told us, it is full of the spirit and life. And we pray, dear God, that we will be partakers of it, even as we reflect. Minister to us, O God, for your own name's sake. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we continue with our sermon series on the call of God to grow in the Holy Spirit. So we will be considering our call in that regard. Yesterday we looked at what it means to practice the Word of God. And today we will be looking at practicing self-denial. In our journey to growth, self-denial is of pertinent importance. And so to grow in the Holy Spirit, we actually must get out of the way so that we can be able to align ourselves uh, with God's will and desire. And so we will be looking at what it means to practice self-denial so that we can grow in the spirit. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 9 from verse 18 from which we will draw our lessons. Luke chapter 9 from verse 18. The Bible says, Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowd say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone, and he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God, the word of the Lord. This passage uh, will help us see how it is that we can practice self-denial. And it teaches us a number of things in that regard. And number one, it points us to the fact that self-denial comes through a disposition of prayer. Verse 18, we see the Bible telling us that Jesus was praying in private, but he also had his disciples with him. Because of Jesus' prayer life, he was able to also practice self-denial. Jesus maintained a strong prayer life. This helped him to ignore 
this helps him helped him not to ignore or shy away or avoid the path of self-denial and the cup of suffering as he put it in other passages. There is a growth that we can only reach only through suffering and Jesus knew that. As long as he wanted to advance the kingdom of God, he had to follow through this path of being rejected, of being denied, of suffering, of going to the cross, even dying. He had to pass through this path in order to advance the kingdom of God, in order to advance the will of God. He drew his strength from God in prayer to be able to achieve this. So remember that whatever it is that God calls us to practice, he also equips us for it. He also resources us for it with himself uh, through his Holy Spirit. And so through prayer, Jesus was able to access the power and the strength to walk in self-denial. Secondly, what this passage reminds us is that self-denial is expected, is expected of those that have a revelation of who Christ is. When we look at verses 20 and 21, Jesus follows with a conversation of, after uh, he comes out of uh, prayer, he actually immediately talks to his disciples and he wanted to find out if they yet have a revelation of who he was. And through a discourse, Peter finally said that indeed Jesus was the Christ. He was the anointed one. He was the Messiah of God that they had been long waiting for. And we know that in other versions or in other uh, gospels, especially the gospel of, of Matthew, Jesus actually tells him that uh, this was not revealed to him by flesh and blood, but by the Spirit of God. And so the, po at the point where the Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus is, and we take him as he is, as Lord, as Savior, and Messiah, and not like the chief priests and other people are saying that he's just a prophet, that he's Elijah, uh, who has actually come back to life. But when we get the revelation through the Holy Spirit and accept and believe the fact that Jesus is indeed Lord, that Jesus is indeed the Messiah, then we are supposed to expect self-denial, the call to self-denial to actually come. And Jesus did not actually reveal this path to them before then reminding us that this is a path that is expected of those that have a revelation of who Jesus is. Jesus did not invite his disciples to the journey of self-denial and suffering until they had an affirmation of who he is. We cannot affirm Christ and ourselves at the same time. One has to give. At the moment we are living at a time where self-affirmation and what the so-called self-aggrandizement or a, pre a preoccupation with ourself is on the rise, is actually on the rise and is seen to be valuable. Everyone is looking out for themselves. They are looking out, you know, to, uh, they are looking out uh, for themselves to save themselves, but Jesus is actually calling us to practice self-denial, which is completely the opposite, which as he puts it here, is actually to lose ourselves, to lose our lives in his. And so this call of our current time of just a preoccupation with ourselves certainly makes us to have a blind view of Christ. And 
even his will for us, even when we purport to be following him. And so to have a clearer view of Christ, to have a clear view of Christ, one of the things that must give is ourselves. That's why we began by saying to, to practice self-denial, we must get out of the way. Egoism cannot thrive in self-denial. We must deny ourselves uh, if we are to have a clear view of Christ. And this is why we are saying that we need, we actually need to get out of the way uh, of Christ. Number three, Jesus's uh, invitation in verse 23 and 24 is that whoever wants to be his disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow him. For whoever wants to save their lives will lose it, but whoever loses their lives for his sake uh, will save it. And so this invitation, it is uh, in the way that we actually deal with suffering, that we have and give proof that we are his disciples. Jesus proved that he was the Messiah through taking the cup of suffering, facing death and conquering it through resurrection. His message and demonstration of himself was not complete until that was done. We should therefore not shy away from suffering as long as we are following Christ. There is growth that we can only get through this path of self-denial, pain and suffering as long as we subject ourselves to the Lordship of Christ with the help of his Holy Spirit. And this does not mean that we go looking for trouble or go looking for pain. It will certainly find us, you know? Like someone has said, we are either uh, in a mess or we are either in trouble or getting out of it or getting into it. You know, trouble will find us. We don't need to go uh, looking for it. What it rather means is that if it finds us in our journey of following Christ, remember Christ is our object. Christ is the one that we are looking to, that we patiently bear it. And just like Jesus did, uh, continue to fulfill God's purpose in pain, in suffering, or even sometimes regardless of it. And this is a call that God wants to, uh, this is a call that God makes to all of us. But one thing we must uh, be cautious about is that this journey of self-denial abhors a consumer mentality. When we look at verse 25, the Bible tells us, that what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit, or forfeit their very self? A consumer mentality will, will uh, keep us from the path of self-denial. And again, we know that this is prevalent in our times. Many times, even the way we approach God is so that we can get something from him. Not because we have had a revelation of him and we know that he is the Christ and that we want to follow him no matter what, in pain or sorrow, in good times or bad times. And so we must rid ourselves of a consumer mentality. If all we want from God is what he has to offer, and especially as far as material things are concerned and not really his will, then self-denial will be tough 
will be tough for us. It's even something that we will not consider. But we must determine in our hearts to lose our lives in his so that we are only following for his sake and for his purpose and not so that we can fulfill our own fleshly desires. And so the remedy that Jesus gives us is that we may carry our cross. And that cross is meant to be used every time we need to crucify the flesh. Every time the flesh is in competition with the spirit. Every time the flesh is in competition with the word and the will of God. So that we crucify it and keep following Jesus. May the Lord help us. Indeed, Lord, it is our prayer that we will know what it means to practice self-denial. May we be willing and obedient. Because, Father, we have received a revelation of who you are, and we want to follow you no matter what. Help us by your Holy Spirit, even to make this vision clearer of yourself, O oh God, and of the journey that we must make. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>